Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis, the channel where we look at complex organic chemistry and explain how it works. Today, we are going to look at part two of the synthesis of saccharinega alkaloids. In the previous video, we analyzed the structure of these molecules, and we looked at the construction of an electrophilic and a nucleophilic coupling partner. These coupling partners form the two sides of the molecule. So let's dive back in and see how this synthesis was completed. A stilly coupling reaction was used to join the two sides of the dimeric structure. As with the stanylation reaction, palladium-2 was used as the catalyst. In a simplified explanation of the mechanism, the catalyst first undergoes oxidative addition into the carbon-iodine bond of the substrate. The nucleophilic partner then reacts with the palladium-2 complex which undergoes transmetallation to eliminate tributyl tin iodide and leave both coupling partners bound to the palladium center. Reductive elimination produces the desired compound and palladium zero, which can then go to react further. I'll include a link to a paper which goes over the details of the different mechanisms which are possible during stilly coupling reactions for anyone that's interested in the precise details of how this reaction works. The next step was a conjugate reduction. In order to selectively reduce the alpha-beta unsaturated double bond, the authors employed Stryker's reagent to perform the desired transformation. This reagent preferentially adds a hydride in a conjugate fashion, and it did not react with the less electrophilic gamma conjugate position of the other ring. The reaction produced the desired enantiomer, but less than 5% of its epimer observed. We can explain the selectivity of this reduction by looking at the conformations of the possible transition states. The silol enol ether intermediate will take on a half chair conformation with the proline occupying the more favorable equatorial position. Protonation at the top phase will allow for the formation of a chair-like transition state and a product with the butinolide group in the equatorial position, the most favorable conformation for minimizing 1-3 diaxial interactions. Alternatively, protonating the intermediate at the bottom phase produces a twist boat transition state with a higher energy than its chair conformation alternative. The twist boat conformation produces a product of the butinolide group in an axial position, which has unfavorable 1 3 diaxial interactions. While the cyclohexane ring can undergo a ring flip to put the butinolide group in an equatorial conformation, it does have a high activation energy and this poses a barrier for this reaction pathway. Following the conjugate reduction, the synthesis proceeded with the protection of the secondary alcohol using TES triflate. As previously seen, this does not protect the sterically hindered tertiary alcohol. A loose reduction then followed, which reduced the ketone of the cyclohexanone ring down to an alcohol. Steric hindrance from the butinolide group ensured that the correct isomer was obtained and the resulting alcohol was acetylated using acetic anhydride and DMAP. The synthesis proceeded with the deprotection of the secondary alcohol using HF and oxidation using desmartin pyridine. This reaction involves the nucleophilic attack of the hydroxyl group and the hypervalent iodine center. The deprotonation of the hydrogen geminal to the oxygen forms a carbon oxygen double bond and reduces the iodine which acts as an electron sink and completes the desired transformation. To construct the second butinolide ring, the authors utilized Bestman's illid. This unusual reagent reacts first as a ketene electrophile, which forms an ester upon reaction with the tertiary alcohol nucleophile. The phosphonium moiety then acts as a Wittig reagent and forms an oxophosphatane ring with the carbonyl group. Elimination triphenylphosphine oxide generates the target butinolide in one step from the alpha hydroxyl ketone. In order to prepare for the final cyclizations, the acetate groups were deprotected and the resulting hydroxyl groups were mesylated to convert them into suitable leaving groups. Deprotection of the n boc groups with TFA unmasked the nitrogen nucleophiles. Reaction of the molecule with potassium carbonate performed the desired transformation forming a new five-membered ring with a tertiary amine. 
This underwent an SN2 mechanism which inverted the stereo center and provided the target stereo chemistry. The cyclization of both nitrogen centers completed the synthesis of fluganine D with a final yield of 4.5 milligrams. With fluganine D in hand, it was a simple matter to synthesize fluganine I with a simple conjugate addition of sodium methoxide. While 1,6 conjugate additions are typically quite sluggish and suffer from mixed 1,4 addition along with the desired 1,6 addition, the structure of this molecule does not have other electrophilic sites capable of forming a thermodynamic product by a reaction with sodium methoxide, which allowed for the formation of fluganine I with a yield of 3.3 milligrams. We can look at the space film model of the compound to explain the stereochemical result of this reaction. The 1,6 addition only produces one enantiomer, which can be attributed to the steric hindrance of the pyrrolidine ring which blocks attack from the top face of the molecule. With this conjugate addition complete, we have completed the syntheses of fluganines D and I. This work is the first synthesis of dimeric secureneg alkaloids, which bear an alpha-delta connectivity between the subunits. It is notable for its stereocontrolled conjugate reduction strategy and its different approaches to constructing butinolide rings. It opens up new avenues to synthesize secureneg alkaloids, which we will no doubt see implemented in future. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. There's a lot more content on the way, and if you'd like to see any syntheses covered, please let me know in the comments down below.